on Hill and Beard, it's your boy Big Beard B, and we back for another edition of Big Beard Business. For those of you who are new to the channel, I am B, and on this channel, I help you improve your confidence by way of compliments using these wonderful things we call fragrances. As you can see from the title, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 releases for this year of 2020. Now I know 2020 has been a crazy year for most of us, but in the world of fragrance, it was crazy too, okay? But we also had some ridiculous bangers, some misses, but we also had some heat as well. And today I'm gonna give you my take on 10 that really did it well. I was able to pick up a few of them, and from that I was able to narrow down a list of 10 fragrances I felt hit the spot. Well. At least for me. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions as we go through this. And as always, drop your boy a like. So if you like to hear it, well, here we go. Now first up, we have a fragrance that comes from a house that's known for their spicy fragrances. This fragrance hails from Victor and Ralph, and this one is none other than Spice Bomb Night Vision Art de Parfum. Now we did see the 2019 brought us the EDT that didn't get, well, a ton of great reception, at least from the world of Fragcom, but Art de Parfum version has been spot on. And if you know anything about the line of fragrances that the Spice Bomb lineage really created you have the edt which is the original you have the edp which is the extreme you have O fresh night vision and now we have night vision auto parfum i really believe that they did everything right in this fragrance in terms of what the edt was missing as you might expect from a fragrance with the name of spice bomb this one has some spices you have nutmeg you have clove you have some black pepper in this thing and then you also have some warmth in here uh brought in by some woody notes in here as well i really enjoyed the scent one of the top tier fragrances from a designer perspective for me at least this year spice bomb night vision auto parfum now next up we have a fragrance that i really really enjoy and i probably mentioned it probably about five times on this channel but uh, more so in the spring and summer when i talked about this scent this one comes from steven when his collaboration with uh, Navitas came out this is the second part of that where he released three fragrances arcanum Absolutio, and then this fragrance here, Lautus. Now, Lautus is one that I have really enjoyed. Now, I know I've talked about a few of the fragrances within this collection, but this is one of those fragrances that really stand out to me. This is like this classic feel that comes off elegant. It's sharp, it's fresh, it's also refreshing, and it's also a nice different twist in it. Now, you have some of the typical uh, fragrance stack that you would get. You get some citruses in the top, you have a few florals in the mid, and then in the base, you get some woody nuances there as well. But um, in addition to that, you get some of that patchouli. It comes off a bit earthy in the scent, and it's one that I really, really like. It's elegant, sophisticated, and if you want to check out his fragrance collection, be sure to do so at the link down below at Navitas Parfums. And you also know that I released my five fragrances within this uh, this year, or in 2020, I released five fragrances. And within my collection, the Enamored Collection, you have five fragrances, Exalt and Wheat, you have Soir Exclusive, you have Idola for the ladies out there. You also have Elation and Verve Matan. On the site right now, they have uh, discounts up to 50%. You go through, check them out, man. Shipping is free with two or more fragrances man and then also that is worldwide make sure you get your orders in to get some people very happy this holiday season man but Lautus, very fine job my friend i'm digging this one now i went back and forth between this next fragrance that i'll mention with two or three other fragrances that i thought were exceptionally well this year too but when i kind of break it back in terms of the longevity the performance etc when it comes down to the scent i think that this one kind of stands out above the two other fragrances two or three other fragrances that were in its realm this year and this fragrance is from armani and this one is aqua de joe profondo right um this one is again another blue scent right but this one here differs a bit from the others that we saw within the collection i talked about this one at the top of the year being one of the standout scents and even at the end of the year this fragrance still is a top tier contender in my personal opinion uh, again you get the same freshness that depth of blue oceanic feel that you get within their fragrances is live and present within this one and i think it's one that you really can't go wrong with depending on what you're looking for so aqua de joe 
Profundo, not to be confused with Profumo. Now, when I saw the images of this next fragrance floating around, I was like, hmm, okay, okay. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that this was a flanker to a fragrance that I really love. Uh, this fragrance comes from Byron Parfums, and this one is Moola Moola Rouge Extreme. Now, you know, if you've been around this channel for a while, that I am a huge fan of Moola Moola, the OG. And this one is a solid fragrance as well. Then they differ a bit, so I think that if you are looking for a fragrance, this one is really in a place where you can have them both within your collection and be okay with it. Now, one of the downfalls of this fragrance, if you have any, if I had to say one, is that sometimes some people say that this fragrance leans a bit feminine, but in my personal opinion, this is one that is well suited for both men and women. Uh, I don't think he really specified that this one is for men or for women. I think this is a unisex scent. And this one here, you get a bit of those additional red notes in the top of this fragrance. So if you see any of the box on this one, and also in the writing, you see the Rouge Extreme, you see the Rouge in red, because Rouge is red, right? <laughs> They're also extreme. And then in the box itself, it highlights this red. To me, that's a triple red threat. I'm not sure if he was going for that on purpose, but red, red, red kind of adds up to those three red notes in the top. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, you also get that caramel feel in the scent that we come accustomed to. Great job, my friend. Rouge Extreme for the win. Now this next fragrance on my list is a fragrance that I was really hooked on from first smell of this thing. I sprayed it, I was like, oh, this one is a winner for sure. This one comes from PDM or Parfum de Marley, and this one is Pegasus Exclusive. Now, this one is their latest release this year. They obviously came out with a few. They had the revamp of Sedley. They had Greenlee come out, and then now they also have Pegasus Exclusive. I've been really happy with the releases that they had this year, but if I had to choose one, for me at least, and what I like in fragrances, Pegasus Exclusive is definitely the way to go. In my opinion, this one differs enough from the original to call for both as this one starts out a little bit uh, more earthier, grittier, rougher uh, as the other original one is, is jumps off the skin to me a bit lighter. And as this one begins to transition into the dry down, you begin to get the nuances of the original. But I think that the, the opening of this one just takes it away just a bit where you can feel that there's a place for both. I'm a huge fan of this fragrance as well as the original. I'm proud to bring you a side-by-side -side comparison to see which one I like most but I'm pretty sure this one may be the winner. Now this next fragrance hails from a house that we saw a few releases on this year and majority of them I was not a fan of, especially when it comes down to this specific flanker. And this one is a winner though. That's why it's on today's list. And this one is from Jean-Paul Gaultier and this one is Le Mans La Parfum. All right, so this one here really is like the big brother of just Ultramar, right? So you would think La Mar La Parfum, this one would tie back to the original, but to me, this one is more so in line with the Ultramar series. This one is more like, more refined, it's a bit toned down, and this is for those of us who have grown up with Ultramar, I feel like we want something that's kind of reminiscent to that, but it may be a little too loud to wear out to a casual dinner versus the club or to the office, right? Um, I actually had someone hit me up recently, like, hey, can I wear Ultramar to the office? I, I advise you against that, sir. Um, but this one here is one that you could wear as an alternative. So Ultramar, Ultramar. <laughs> so Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mar, Le Parfum. There we go. The next fragrance up is a cool take on lemon, geranium, and cedarwood. And it's a fragrance that I talk about more so in the spring and summer as this fragrance is really suited for that time of year. But it's one that I am a fan of, especially as it comes to 2020 releases that I've at least got my hands on. This one is Y.O. Fresh. Now, there were a few releases, um, which is Y.O. Fresh. And I believe Why Live came out this year, or maybe 2019. It may have come out in 2019. But this is one that uh, I I'm happy about. If you're really looking to determine which one this is, this is really the easiest one to, to check out between all of them as it's in this frosted bottle here. Um, what you can expect with this fragrance, again, is something with lemon. You get that signature sharpness that comes in with the Y fragrance series. But to me, this one is really a bit easier to understand than the others as the others have this metallic-y type of feel to it. Um, and at times, they come off 
a bit weird. At least that's what I thought. When I first smelled EDP, I was like, ah, oh, this one is too cloying for me. But as time went on, I really began to like that one as I've obviously liked the EDT. Now, all of the fragrances within this profile are, are a bit polarizing in my personal opinion. Starting with the Y, right? The, the original Y was polarizing. EDP was a bit polarizing. The Live, not as much. And this one, not as much as well. So this one is a easy grab, easy for people to understand. And it's also going to work in terms of compliments. Why? fresh from YSL. And speaking of fragrance flankers, this next one definitely deserves to be on this list. And I almost put the, uh, you probably can't see it, it's back there somewhere. There's another flanker of this fragrance or the original fragrance that uh, is really good as well. And I'll have to bring you an official review on that one because it's not on today's list simply because I haven't spent enough time with it to give you um, how it stacks up in comparison to this one, but it's really a nice scent. Uh, this fragrance is from Armani and this one is Armani Stronger With You Freeze. Now I've said this before and I'll say it today that I believe the freeze version is the perfect transition from the original uh, Stronger With You and Stronger With You Intensely. Uh, I think that this one is one that you can really rock in the spring and summer. I think that's what it was made for, but this one can also still work for you in the fall and winter. So if you had to choose just one that doesn't have a different twist, is obviously the, the newest one, if you don't know, Stronger With You Leather has leather in it, which this one does not. Um, freeze is definitely the way to go if you can only choose one, in my personal opinion. I'm glad to see them release this fragrance as it was really what they needed, and then the, the frost the bottle and this kind of just adds to the cool factor of this scent stronger with you freeze from our mind now i know some of you out there may say this next fragrance is cheating a bit but technically they released it this year as a different fragrance to an extent this fragrance also comes from pdm and this one is sedley now this sedley is the newer uh, newly masturated version of the original fragrance right so um to me because they released it as a different scent this year i'm going to say it is a different scent it originally came out in 2019 and i was a fan of it then although i did not own it i got it this year and it's one that I've been super, super happy with, man. So uh, I picked this one up from Crystal Fragrance. I do know that she had it in stock. So you let me know, you know, who you're looking for. If I have discount codes for any of these places that you can pick up these fragrances, I will leave them linked and listed down below to share the wealth. I did a first impression of this video with my son. And I've talked about it over and over and over again since then. This one is a hot stakes fragrance for those uh, spring and summer days. And traditionally, when I think of Puff and Damali fragrances, I think of fall and winter. Uh, spring fragrances, they have done some. Galloway is a standout in my personal opinion, if you like that musky feel. But this here is, is really, really a winter scent. So steadily here, you get some of those fruits in the top here. Also comes down with some musk in this scent but not as musky as Galloway really really nice fragrance subtly from Pop and Demonic and last but not least the final fragrance on today's list comes from Amouage and this is fragrance that I actually have a full review on but we, we have not released that yet and this one is Amouage Enclave or Enclave I'm not sure exactly how they're pronouncing it in this one but the bottle in this fragrance kind of sets you up for what you're going to get I get some type of minty feel in this scent you also get some woody nuances here but wait <laughs> there's more you also get some cinnamon in this scent and then there's some cardamom, I believe, here that kind of add that, uh, along with that cinnamon and cardamom, add this spicy tone to it that comes off as just a really, really nice scent. It's a little bit different than I was expecting. Actually, I didn't know what to expect with the scent, but when I sprayed it, I was like, whoa, this is nice. All right, they did a really good job with the scent. So if you look into a minty fragrance that doesn't come off as gimmicky, then I think this is one of those fragrances you should reach for. And in typical unwashed um fashion, you're gonna get something that is high quality. And for those of you who are wondering, although I did really enjoy the Black Iris release that they did this year, the Interlude Man Black Iris, this one is for sure a lot easier wear. My personal opinion, you can wear this all year round. Uh, with that mint and that freshness within the scent, you can really get away with this in the spring or summer, but also some of those that spice and the wood notes in here kind of make this a good play for fall and winter as well, especially if you're looking for a fresher variation because... 
It's a little man, Black Iris, fall and winter all day, and it is a beast. So there you have it, man. Those are my top 10 fragrance releases of 2020. Again, these are not all of the fragrances. These are just some of them. All right, maybe I'm out the way there. But there have been uh, a lot of fragrance releases this year, so hopefully I'll be able to get around to giving you all the reviews on them. But those are the top 10 for me this year. Again, shout out to Novitas Parfums, man. I have five fragrances with them with the Enamic Collection. Also, shout out to Steven and Dallas. All right, Dallas also has his collection with them as well from Chaos Fragrances. So check us out, man. YouTubers out here trying to make something happen for Fragcom. Go ahead and support us. We appreciate you. As always, I'm your boy, Big B. Beat him with the like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we all back again. And you already know what I need you to do. Just hit the goddamn bell.